societal coddling of veterans is something that I deal with every single day on this campus. Now, before I attack America's most precious, most prized, most hailed group of populations here in this country, I need to preface something real quick. I am a veteran. I served six years in the military, active duty service. Okay. I was attached to the United States Marine Corps for all six years. Hoorah. Okay. Um, that being said, on to our next slide. Jake Gomez. Jake Gomez was born in Texas. He was a DACA recipient who joined the Marine Corps because he wanted citizenship in this country. He did six years, two pumps with me. Okay, I was his corpsman, right here, right? And my job was medical attention. Okay, so I had to know everything in and out about Jake Gomez. Okay, Jake Gomez, when he got out of the Marine Corps, he tried to go to college in Texas, and when he got to college, he flunked out his first semester. Jake Gomez witnessed suicide. Jake Gomez witnessed gunfire. Jake Gomez was shot in his left hip. Okay? Jake Gomez tried to apply for the VA when he got out. Jake Gomez could not get help. Why? Because it was overloaded. Because the VA is still taking World War I vets, World War II vets, Vietnam vets, Gulf War vets, Persian Gulf War vets, uh, <laughs> Korean War vets, and so on and so forth. Okay? So the 1% of folks who actually join the military are actually joining to serve their country. The rest are not. Most are minorities, okay? Next slide. So, what do we do about this 1% of folks who do actually uh, want to serve their country? They get out, they do something, and then they want to get taken care of, okay? The 1% breaks down even further to 0.1%, and that 0.1% actually sees combat. So with those 0.1% of folks who actually see combat and they don't get care, what do you think happens to them? This is me right here. I served on honor guard for two years when I first joined the military. Okay? I used to have to serve veterans who have passed away from either suicide, car wrecks, or even necessarily self-injury to themselves or someone other, right? And I've had to present the flag to those folks who was definitely, uh, um, who've been having issues and I had to give them the flag and tell them, hey, thank you so much for your, ser your, your loved one's service to this country and um, an honorable uh, nation, honorable duty, thank you so much. Bounced out, that's it. Never got care, never got a chance, never got help. So with that 0.1% that actually sees combat, what do you think they actually get help? So, for that 0.1% that actually sees combat, what do you think the rest of those folks do? The military is comprised of other branches that do not serve combat units, right? Everything else is your pogue or your grunt. You're either fighting or you're helping, okay? And with those 76% that actually don't serve in combat units, they take advantage of all the resources outside of the military. And with all those resources that they take advantage of, folks actually don't get treated. They don't get cared. They have to wait. They get stuck in the system. They have to wait. They keep waiting. They keep waiting. They keep waiting. And they never get help. Okay? This is me right here. This is my battalion of Marines. There's Jake Owens. Okay? So, what do we actually find out about veterans, right, when they get out? Do they actually get help? Veterans are actually really good self-advocates. Surprisingly, veterans actually like to talk about their service. Veterans actually like to... Uh, emphasize with people, right? They, they need a support system sometimes. They need help, okay? So the peer advisor for veteran education, we talk to these folks every single day. I talk to veterans every single day who are that 0.1% that don't get help, that need help, that demand help, but they don't know how to ask for help, okay? And so with that, that 0.1% of those folks who need to get help, normally when you say thank you for your service, instead of saying thank you for your service, why don't you say, can you tell me about your service? And when you ask, can you tell me about your service? Maybe they want to talk about it, maybe they don't. We're stuck, sorry. And so with that, maybe they might return the favor and say thank you for your service. 